Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. Pretty exciting times. Uh, in our last episode, we got Vulcanus kind of finished up to get a large tungsten supply. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. And we just spent the last hour or so loading up the Derpamu with a lot of junk for our Gleba trip. The way that I had to do this, it's very annoying. I'm not a fan of this UI. Uh, decision. Basically, I wanted all this stuff that we had previously been requesting from Nalvis, but I wanted to import it from Vulcanus, because Vulcanus is kind of my better base right now. It's a better home base than Nalvis is in terms of production. But the problem is I had to click on every single one of these and change what planet I was importing from. I didn't love that. The way you can copy a group, though, is you add a section and you basically grab the group and then you can change the name of it. And then that kind of turns it into a new group. So that's how we did that. I think I just made some accidental requests. Um, so yeah, we've got lots of stuff for Gleba here. I mean, if this isn't enough for Gleba, then I don't know if you can bring enough for Gleba. Because <laughs> I've got I've got a lot of crap. Um, you know what, though, I don't have is calcite for the foundries. I forgot about that. Um, I just don't know... Calcite's so weird. Like, I feel like no matter how much I bring, it's not going to be enough. But yeah, why don't I grab a couple thousand calcite here? Oops, that was supposed to be an extra zero. So that way we can make a decent amount of molten iron and copper, at least. Because between the productivity in making the molten and the productivity in making the plates, you need less than one calcite for a hundred plates. So, I mean, we should, 2,000 should be enough for a while. Because based on that math, that's enough for 200,000 plates. And I think steel, you get even more than you would if you just made plates and then steel. Right? Yeah, because you only need 30 molten iron instead of 50. So that's cheaper in terms of iron ore. Probably to make up for the productivity loss since you're not doing it in two steps. But that's nice. The cable, I think, is also doubled. Yeah, instead of 10 molten copper making two cable, which is what plates would be, it's only five. Again, probably to make up for not having two steps of productivity. But the nice thing is that means you're essentially getting the the 50% productivity twice. Um, or it's kind of like 100% productivity twice, but yeah, all that to say we should have enough calcite for all this. So we'll wait until that arrives and we will hop in a rocket here. I don't, uh, that one, is there one that's not requesting calcite right now? This one? All right, we'll hop in this one. Maybe? What? What's going on? Uh, can't travel. Oh, ammo, I have ammo. Got it, got it. Travel to space platform. ESS Depemu. And we're going to Gleba, boys and girls. Gleba, Gleba, Gleba. Oh boy, what Trupin spent his first 24 hours doing. We are finally going after... Did I ever have a 30? I don't think so. We are going after 57 hours of play. Wow. I can't believe we're already 57 hours in. I, I feel like we've really lost track of time. 57 hours. All right. Now, this is just a travesty of a space platform. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is so inefficient. We really should do a sushi loop for the asteroid chunks. I think that would be way more effective um, than what we're doing now. But this has seemed to work just fine. It's definitely better than the Hendrickson having two of each crusher. Um, and we even added... I think this might have been after you... 
you guys saw it. I can't remember if we did this off stream or off video or both. But I essentially added... Because we're trashing metallic asteroid chunks when we have too many of them. So that we don't back up all the chunks. And then... What I'm doing down here is if... those, Because those are getting trashed, we might as well try reprocessing them into carbonic and oxides. So then that goes over here and feeds back in. And I just trash the oxide... Uh, uh, carbonics and metallics so we get some extra oxides this way is essentially what that's doing <laughs> yeah just fine the ss just fine and the slightly more than just fine have been great um honestly like i've seen a lot of people's basic pictures online and this is far more than what most people build uh it's certainly less carefully engineered. I have no idea whether the numbers for any of these things really make sense. I have no idea if we have too many panels or not enough panels. Um, I know at Vulcanus we have too many panels, but by the time we get to Gleba... Gleba better or worse than Novus? 50%. Slightly worse. Okay. Like, it might not be enough for, for, for Fulgora, I'm not sure, but without any further ado, let's do it. Let's go to Gleba. Um, so we take the derp remover, we add a station, we add the Gleba station, circuit, fill crude oil barrel, grade to zero. That's not gonna happen on accident. Here we go. I'm scared. I'm scared, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Shoot down all the asteroids on the way with impunity. You used legendary Spider-Tron as a condition? Yeah, that that won't happen for a while. I could leave it as blank is less than zero and it'll never fulfill. That's a good point. Your first platforms had no belts. Interesting. Kept them nice and small. I just love how much variety there is. It's fun. Oh, look at all these chunks escaping because I didn't have the uncommon asteroid collector to grab with two arms at the same time. In fact, there's a lot that we're not grabbing. So yeah, upgrading these to uncommon would be necessary if I was going to do some more. Some more official space station making. I probably could have made some rare ones on Fulgora for free. I haven't really looked. What do these need again? Um, electric engine units, not so much. I would have had to have made rare engines. I do have rare circuits, but not rare engines. And also not rare pipes. You'd have to make rare pipes, and then make rare engines, and then make rare electric engines. So it would have taken a bit of work. But could have been done. Becoming human, you're welcome. Thanks for saying thank you. You're welcome. It's fun stuff. Fun stuff indeed. All right, we're stopped at Gleba. We made it. Well, shall I? Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. GLHF indeed. Here we are. Sunnycomb. Ah, it's like a honeycomb but different. It's just straight up spoilage. All right, we're going to we're going to see the word spoilage a lot, I think. Um we've got a banana-shaped patch of stone. 
And we've got our Terraria music, which is fun. Oh, yes. What is this? Jelly stems. Mmm, jelly nuts. Wow, 50 jelly nuts. That's a lot. Oh, it's spoiling. Oh, Lord, it's spoiling. Oh, boy. Slimy farmable crop. Grants burst of movement when eaten. How much movement? Whoa. Whoa, we really zoom in. What's the... Does it tell you? Uh, it doesn't tell you the... The actual boost that you get. That feels weird. But it's significant. Funnel trunks. What they called me in high school. Um, Harry Club Nub? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's what they, yeah, no. All right, we're, the, we're, we're gonna stop saying that joke because I feel like we could say about a lot of these. Copper stromatolites. So these stromatolites are the things that we mine for ore. Oh, we researched a heating tower. Heating tower. Interesting. I would have thought that would have been on Aquilo, not on Gleba. Oh, there's a baddie. You know what I forgot to do? was a personal laser defense. Some of you might have noticed that and not said anything like a champ. So now we just get to run away. Um, so we're gonna need to go get some PLD, huh? Totally forgot about PLD. Okay, I, I just feel frozen. Like, what do we even do? This is so weird. Let's keep exploring a little bit, I guess. Okay, there's some more enemies. There's an egg raft. Small wrigglers. More of these stromatolites. Yumako tree. Yumako? Yumako? I think this is the other of the main things that we farm. Grants burst of health regeneration. Okay. Um. There's, there are oceans and lakes here. I don't know if we knew that before. If we did, I certainly wasn't paying attention. Water cane. So those are just trees, basically. So I'm guessing this color, the coloration on the map is where we can actually do the farming of a certain thing. I'm not really sure. Uh, we forgot to bring cliff explosives as well. So here, why don't we send the derpa move while we're exploring, let's send this back to Vulcanus. Let's set up PLD. PLDR. Um, personal laser defense, like so. I pro uh, no, no, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it away from speed beacon so I can actually put quality in it. Uh, so like right here. And then quality. Boom, 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 boom. And then you've been crushed by drop pods. Tomato, tomato, Yumeko, Yumako. Uh, what was I doing? Two things. I was doing two things. What was the other thing? Cliff explosives. So the Derpamu needs to requestify a large amount of boom booms. 200 boom booms? Rocket capacity is 20, so that's 10 rockets already? Yeah, that's, probably don't want to do more than that. Um, and PLD, which I might just wait a moment. 
Let's see what we get. We, we really want uncommon ones. That might take some chance. Won't it? Gosh, and the amount of actual laser turrets that that consumes is kind of absurd. Hey, there's one. So what does that actually do? It just has more range. Yeah, I guess that helps. Okay, so what do we do on this planet exactly? What do you what, do you, what would you say it is? What do you do here exactly? Um So, we unlock the heating tower. Heat from chemical fuels. Agriculture. So the agricultural tower, you literally need spoilage to build it. It's it's built out of rotting material. And nutrients from spoilage. You can start with 10 spoilage and get some half spoiled nutrients. Okay. So I need to mine some iron stromatolites. And we search for that. Nope. That's kind of obnoxious. I guess we look till we find these things. Okay. So that just catapulted forwards our Glaba research because I've already grabbed some jelly nuts and Yumiko's. Um. So what is this done in? A biochamber or an assembling machine, you can turn a jelly nut into jelly and jelly nut seeds. And then jelly nut seeds can be planted on jelly nut soil. And we have to find jelly nut soil. Which looks what is it this? So it's this bright pink stuff on the map? Also, artificial jelly nut soil? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, Derpamu is out of space. Well, let's plop a few more of those. Get rid of that problem. Uh, cliff explosives. And what else was I requesting? Oh, I wasn't going to request it. I was just going to send it up manually. So we've got two uncommons now, that's it. I can manually grab uncommon PLDs, place them in. Deliver to the Derpamu, and then we'll do some regulars. Oh, I should have done that before I hit deliver. Not rotting, rotted. Good point. Spoilage doesn't spoil further. It's it's as rotten as it'll ever get. Um, okay, so this is more of the jelly nut wetland. Now, what's the other one called? Again, Yumako. 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 Hmm. I assume it's this bright green where we can plant it. Like Yumako wetland. Yep. There's Yumako wetland. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Oh, I need to bring down some bots. Um, are you done yet? No, we need to deliver more PLD. Like so. What's up, Rafal? You have a question? Okay. Shoot. Right, we'll just turn that back on automatic. And then once that arrives, we can ship it back to Gleba. 
and then we'll figure out where to put a hub of some sort. I don't even know where that will be. And we got a whole new world of interesting squishy spoilage awaiting us. And it's arrived. Alright, so that'll be here in a couple minutes. As far as where to put a base... I mean, it seems like here is reasonable because we can bring up the, the green stuff from above and the, the pink stuff from below. But we can also explore a bit more. Now, this bot flashing thing, we gotta cancel that. Oh, there's a big boy. Stompa. Some cliffs. Cliffs are really hard to see on Gleba. Gosh, I can't imagine going to Gleba first. Dealing with all this, all these trees and cliffs everywhere. Just like building is a pain in the butt. No thanks. I, I do question, um, this is kind of a side note, I question if cliff explosives being locked behind Vulcanus is actually good. I'm, I'm not totally convinced that that's a good mechanic. Alright, we're just exploring here. We can outrun all of the threats in our beautiful mech armor. Um, is it possible to send? Yeah, uh, that's a good question, Rafal. I actually don't know the answer to that. You can destroy cliffs with nukes, but nukes are quite expensive, and getting nukes to other planets, which is the primary thing I'm actually talking about right now, uh, is also problematic. Because you can't put nukes on rockets, and you also to actually bring the materials for one nuke is like 10 rockets or more or whatever. It's ridiculous. So that's not really a solution for the other two planets. Because what I'm talking about is being able to remove cliffs. On, like, if you were to go to Gleba first, the cliffs alone are going to be significantly annoying. Now this has cliff generation that I think is far less punishing now, but I don't think that's true of the other planets. Like, the cliffs here are going to be pretty annoying, I think. Um, all right, so I'm thinking about where to build now that we've explored a little more, and it actually feels like here-ish could be reasonable. We got pink and green around. I really don't know what we're doing, but there's a little base over there, a little base over there. I don't even know. Um, this almost feels more foreign than Fulgora did. This is crazy. Okay, the Derpamoo's arrived. Let's send down the cargo hub first. Cargo landing pad. And some cargo bays. And we'll go grab those. What are these? Yumakos, okay. Oh, interesting. Should I? Uh, no, there's a big green patch right there, too. I think this will be an okay spot. Now, where are these going to arrive? Here? Wait. What are these random pluses in the map? Also kind of odd. Um, isn't it supposed to tell you? This is like actually potentially problematic. Where did those land? I guess we were by that stone patch, so it's gonna be somewhere near there. Oh, stone. Is there stone up here? There's a little bit. Very small stone patches. Oh, that's pollute. Wait, how did we make pollution? Just from mining something, it makes a tiny bit. 
Interesting. Okay, there's the notification. All right. So we'll grab our cargo landing pad. plop this here. <laughs> what? Oh. Just kidding. This is a swamp. This is water. You know, this is the downside to having mech armor, is everything feels like land you can build on. <laughs> but it is indeed not. So maybe we need to build over here where there's flat ground. I don't know what map colors represent things you can and can't build on. Um... Most of them are buildable. Alright, so I guess we build here instead. Sure. Sure, why not? We don't know what we're doing. What's the worst thing that can happen? Alright, let's start sending crap down. Um, so, send me... Substations... Some belts, definitely some miners, implants, refineries, yada yada. Some solar panels to get power started. Mm, bunch of cliff explosives. And then a bunch of bots. For our cargo needs some pipes, some inserters. Hmm. A little bit of all the materials just to have. Alright. Some piercing rounds, some uncommon turrets, some laser turrets. That's good for now. Okay, so then... First order of business is a roboport. And some power. Now, issue is going to be... So these are less powerful than normal. It's also a longer day-night cycle than normal. And what that means is you need more accumulators for the same amount of average power throughout the night. I don't really know much power this will make, but I might as well put it all down for now until I get some sort of more helpful solution, which is probably those heat towers, I'm guessing. Um, okay, so we need to craft nutrients to move forward in the Gleba tech tree. Uh, how do we do that? Iron bacteria... Upper bacteria. So, so jelly. What can we do with jelly? How do we make nutrients? Used in alternative recipes. So spoilage, we already know about that. Oh, you can just directly make it from Yumako Mesh. Okay. Um, so Yumako Mesh in a bio chamber only. Bio chamber is the only choice. Okay. But to make a bio chamber, we need to make 10 nutrients. So we got to start with nutrients from spoilage. 
or from fish, or from biter eggs. Pretty sure I can't get biter eggs yet, and raw fish are not here. They are only on the Nauvis. I think. Are there fish in the in the water here? I guess I haven't really looked. Are there little fishies? Um, I don't see any. Hey, cutie. Aww. You just want to be near me. Uh, yeah, I don't see any fishies. No, I don't think there's fish here. So, we need to send down the PLD. I forgot about that. Roboports, lamps. I th you might be able to make a fish farm, just not here. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how it all works. All right, let's take out some of the normal exos. I got plenty. Throw in some PLDs. That should be enough, probably. Okay, so I need some spoilage, which these trees have for me. And. Wow, that really looks like there's still stuff on the ground that is going to get in the way of me building, but there's not. And so now I can do this guy and throw in my spoilage. Make some nutrients. Ta-da! And those spoil in two minutes. Oh my. Nutrients do not last long. Now, these are half spoiled already, but still, that means the full time is only like five minutes. Okay, so now I can make bio chambers. But bio chambers require landfill and pentapod eggs, which we can harvest from egg rafts. From my FFF knowledge. Um, hey look, I found some. Oh boy, they're spoiling. I have 15 minutes, or these are gonna run out and create big premature wriggler pentapod. Oh boy. Um,. So, I need to go get some stone mining going so I can do landfill. There's some stone right up there. And we have big mining drill. Stone's right here. We're just gonna bring that down. And there we go, there's stone, okay. Then landfill. This is fun. You know, this is like a new game, right? Like, it's kind of like when you started Factorio for the first time. You're like, what is going on? I don't understand anything. And that's kind of the feeling I have right now. It's really fun. It's like a whole fresh, a boom puff. Oh, ah, I don't know what I expected. It went boom. <laughs> But I do want to get rid of you, actually, so get out of here. You can go boom all you want. Um, alright, so modules, maybe? A little faster, a little more efficient. Okay, so we've got landfill. And then, to make bio chambers, we need all the other things, including nutrients. Boom. Done. Can bio chambers be made inside of bio chambers? Is it like the other ones? Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Cool. Our first bio chamber. Also, uh, we do need to establish a foundry. Pepper Moon needs to send Red Rover, Red Rover, send some calcite and some foundries down over. Hey, we have spoilage? What? 
Oh, that was weird. Why was that over that slot? I thought the bio chamber spoiled for a second. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Our first bio chamber. Yes. OK, so this, like the other buildings, has a built in 50% productivity and a crafting speed of two. Um, but it's smaller. It's only a three by three. We can do heavy and light oil cracking. So that means petroleum gets way cheaper. And we can also do rocket fuel. And it looks like not the solid fuel part. But that ends up giving you way more rocket fuel because also you get extra prod from cracking the heavy oil. So that's kind of a big deal. You can make carbon from spoilage. Interesting. I think that increases the fuel value. Oh, it's a 12 second craft time though. The spoilage is only like 250 megajoules, right? Or kilojoules. And we go to two. So we get 1.5 carbon, which is three megajoules from six spoilage, which is 1.5 megajoules, but it, the building has to run for 12 seconds. So that's not worth it. Pizza, it's lacking pizza. It needs pizza to run. Oh my gosh, I love that it's a pizza icon. That's so fun. We need pizza for our bio chamber. Can you feed it other stuff? No, you have to feed it pizza. Okay, so I'm I'm only going to call it pizza from now on, by the way. If you wanted me to call it something else, you're out of luck. So I need the Yumako mash now, which is probably... I can also do that in the assembling machine. Okay, that I, it's gonna take a while to learn what can and can't be done in which buildings. So the Yumako processing can be done here, but how do I get the Yumako mash? Oh, this is the Yumako mash. Oh, okay. And then that to nutrients can be done where? Only in the bio chamber? Used in... Yeah, that's only in the bio chamber. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm learning... Am I learning? I don't know if I'm learning. Uh, things are happening, though. So then we can change... The bio chamber... I think all my nutrients spoiled. That's what happened there. So the bio chamber is going to make nutrients from Yumako Mash here. And we can take the Yumako Mash and we can put them in there. We take the nutrients to fuel the dang thing, because it eats nutrients like a crazy thing. Oh my goodness, but then it doesn't really matter that I'm doing this, because then it's all going to be spoiled by the time I do the next thing. Ah, oh, this is awesome. I hate it. Oh, wow. Okay. And those are already spoiled, because these are spoiled. Oh my gosh. This is nuts. Okay, I need to make some of those agricultural towers. Um, let's not handcraft that. So where do I get spoilage? I just cut down some of these weird trees. Like these. Sunnycombs. I love that they're called sunnycomb instead of honeycomb. Um... Okay, so there's some spoilage. I'll have plenty of spoilage if I just wait another half hour. These jelly nuts and Yumakos have a long spoilage time. Yeah, exactly. I'm about to have plenty of spoilage if I just sit for a minute. Um, okay, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to craft the two main buildings here because they both need landfill. That's at least something that won't spoil. And you need steel and circuits, so we'll get that going. This is crazy! Um, I'm gonna put a couple laser turrets to defend home base here. And our power generation. Which, unfortunately, the power draw on that is pretty high. So now we need to look into that heat tower thing. So these guys make 16 megawatts. I do need concrete. Boilers and heat pipes. 
Didn't think to bring heat pipes, did I now? I did think to bring concrete, however. Um... happening and I love it. I love it. <sighs> they make 40, they use 16. Oh, that's wonderful. I did see... So, okay. This is a complaint. Lodge it formally, if you will. Uh, my complaint is that the heating towers only display their consumption and not their... Con oh, never mind. I'm done. It just displays in a different spot. I saw the 16 and the 250%. And I, I mentally logged, like, it either consumes less than 16 and is 250% efficient, or it consumes 16 and makes more. I didn't say all that out loud, but I did think that. But it shows down below, it generates 40 megawatts of heat, so. That's nice. Um, but yeah, we'll grab all that, and then... I love having a huge inventory, by the way. Can we just say a thank you to Mr. Rare Mech Armor for providing me with, uh, where is it? 80 extra inventory slots. That is just glorious. Okay, so heat plus heat exchanger plus steam turbine requires copper, which we have. I just need to bring down. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mech Armor. Also, can we, like, not have this chaos happening? Come on now. We can fit... We can fit two more PLDs in here. Or even... Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, take all that. And then... What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Okay, boiler. Now, where's water? Where can I put one of them offshore? And the answer is places that do not look like shorelines. Oh my. Okay, that's that's a thing. I feel like I need a mod that like highlights the the ponds and stuff. Cuz it's so hard to actually see where they are. Holding an offshore pump is the easiest way, and the problem is the green even kind of like blends in with the terrain. It's not even that easy to see. But yeah, I have water right here, somehow. Okay. Um, cool, so there's water. And... Gosh, this is just like... It's like I'm starting Factorio fresh. Now, can I landfill? I probably can. Um, so let's, let's get some landfill. I'm guessing I can just landfill over this right now. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, this does feel like a landfill heavy kind of kind of situation. Oop, I don't have enough yet. All right, so anyway, that's going to make some stuff, but I need the heat tower. I just feed it with jelly nuts, we sure can. And mega jewels. So jelly nuts are kind of the, the power crop. Obviously, spoilage works too, but. So there's that, and then that'll heat this up, and then we're gonna need some of these guys. And there's our first 10 megawatt power plant with water in the way, because I need landfill. Yeah, spoilage is more or less nothing. Yeah, that is. But I've also noticed. But look at these turbo belts. Just zoom in with those items. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, I say. All right, so these guys are running. That's not hot enough is the problem. Yeah. Okay. More jelly nuts. Because it starts at 500. There we go. So now everything's hot enough to spin up. And there's some power. All right. And we're charging up the accumulators again. Cool. All right. Things are happening. Now. Ooh, these glow in the dark? Mr. Sting Fronds. What a beautiful, what a beautiful planet. Like, I think I said this in the FFF review that I did when we read through every single FFF. I think I said Glaba was my favorite visual planet. Or the visuals on Glaba are the favorite of any of my plant. My favorite of all the planets, however you say those words. Uh, and that is definitely still true. <laughs> Spoilage is such a small amount of power that the inserter putting it in the machine uses a significant fraction of the power produced. That's funny. Um, why did I come here? I came here to make a radar. To kick ass and chew bubblegum. And guess what? I'm all out of jelly nuts. I mean bubblegum. Now... How do I actually do the farming thing? Because didn't I, I, did I successfully make one of those tower thingies? So it's funny, I still have all these random, random things here. Okay, let's, let's clean up my, my hot bars a bit. Um, there's some agricultural tower, okay. So these go somewhere, I can put one there. Why can I put one there? I can put one there for reasons I don't understand. Can't do anything. Don't know. Sure looks like it's doing something. Oh, it can just collect all the trees. And it collects the boom ones too. Okay, good to know. We've learned. Learning has occurred. But over here, if we feed it with jelly nut seeds, which don't spoil, how do I do the jelly nut processing? Um, everything is spoilage. Everything is spoilage. Oh my gosh. Okay, so jelly nut processing. So this gets us a shot, 2% chance only by the way, at jelly nut seeds. And then we get a bunch of jelly, which is a pretty short spoil time. Can I try getting a quality seed? Um, I can, actually, without too much trouble. It'll slow things down a bit, but I need more jelly nut doodads, which are these things. Oh, there's an uncommon jelly nut seed. So then if I put my new fangle, oh, there it shows the colors. What's the difference between green and yellow? I don't know. The difference between jelly nut soil and jelly nut wetland. Okay. I put it here, there's Four green tiles? I don't I don't really understand why that tile's going from green to yellow. Whatever. Um so it's gonna collect stuff. We're gonna unload that stuff. We're gonna put that stuff on a belt. I'm using shift click so that we can not have to worry about things. Um and yeah, there we go. For now, it's all going in chests. Um, okay, so now to plant, we put inputs in. Yes, okay. 
So there goes the uncommon seed planting a tree. And there is a jelly stem, a gleba abomination with a jelly-like stem and soft fleshy lumps that grow wrinkled jelly nuts. Aww. Cool. And it can't plant any Yumakos because that's in the green area. And we need some lasers because the baddies might come. Maybe. I don't really know. Yeah, you know, thank you for pointing that out. I completely forgot to read these. Okay, so spoilables, we already know about. Spoilage percentage in production, we know about that. Gleba Briefing, it's a humid, swampy planet with rich, exotic vegetation that can be cultivated and processed. You can't find iron or crude oil, coal or uranium, but plants provide alternative ways. Even the, agricult the agricultural science pack only has a spoil time of an hour. That's shorter than I expected. Okay. So here it talks about Yumako trees can grow on natural Yumako soil. And you can landfill Yumako wetland into Yumako soil. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. So the wetland can't yet grow. So this can't grow jelly nut trees. I need the, oh, my computer just did a virus scan, fun. Uh, okay, so we need bioflux, no, 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 no. No, I want artificial soil. Okay. Look at the quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Where did the hint go? So, like... Do the seeds make rare trees that then make rare jelly nut? Because, yeah, the spoil time is then higher. That classic 30%. This is one of those areas where it's like, really, you know, making it 30% is making this feel a lot weirder. Like, why not just make it 33% so that it's one hour, one hour, 20 minutes, one hour, 40 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours. You know, like, I don't know. It feels like that would have been easier. Okay, uh, when is this tree gonna grow? How long does it take? that 20%. It doesn't say expected resources being 10 uncommon jelly nuts. So I am a bit concerned they won't be uncommon, meaning uncommon seeds don't matter. I mean, concerned is the wrong word. But I, I don't have concerns at this point yet. I don't even know what I'm doing. But we've got rare jelly. Mm. Um, okay, you fuel things for now. Jeez. Wow, that thing burns through the jelly. Imagine if you had like a legendary heating tower. How quick it would consume those. Oh my goodness, there's so many little things. So five more jelly nut seeds. Okay, one in each little square. I see. I can only plant four squares worth. So if I want a bigger supply, I've got to come over here. To this jelly nut zone. Man, my brain is breaking. Okay, so what are we actually doing now? We need agricultural science packs, which need pentapod eggs and bioflux. How do you get pentapod eggs? That wasn't on one of these. 
Oh, there it is. We just feed nutrients, so it's a it's a pentapod egg loop, which of course spoils into actual enemies. Bioflux is what we use to make stuff like lubricant, sulfur, rocket fuel, and plastic bars. Wow. Okay. Uh, we need to get Alor's name in game. That redemption, you know, is old at this point. But wow, I'm just my brain hurts already. Oh come on! Really? What is this nonsense? What? I don't like that. How does? that not go away? Do we have to landfill over it? Can I landfill over it? Can't landfill over it. You can't remove it. It's just there over the top of whatever you do. Okay, well that's annoying. Um, okay, so artificial soil is researched by crafting 500 nutrients. Alright, well let's get... I can see why why this is a more difficult planet because like you can't take your time to figure this stuff out because by the time you've taken your time to figure it out it's already done it's all spoiled um can jelly be turned into nutrients no it cannot um so i need yumako trees yumako You Mako. Okay, let's go over here. Where we can get some. Maybe. There's not a lot. There's a lot of Yumako wetlands. But right here, there's three spots at least. So there we shall send. Yumako over this direction. Alright, you harvest all the trees, most of which don't matter. Uh-oh. Okay, that's on Nevis. We're okay. We're okay. Now, is that a behemoth? Corpse? I think it is. I think we got our first behemoth. Well, that probably was not our first behemoth, but the first one I've seen, at least. Uh, we need more belts. Let's bring those down. <laughs> On the other hand, there's unlimited resources, so if it all spoils, just farm more. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It's all about setting up these loops that just keep working without worrying about individual items. Uh, it does look like we farmed the one that had that had that was the uncommon seed and it did not produce uncommon jelly nuts. So that should answer that question. Um now what am I doing? No memory. Okay, so we want this guy. And then Yumako seeds are gonna come here. I'll landfill all that. Okay, I'll just pick all that up. Uh, I guess question number two. Do these make wood as well as jelly nut or just jelly nut? I think they make just jelly nut. So then seeds. You were hoping to loop legendary seeds. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, but I think that would be too easy. Okay, so then we're gonna have to do some jelly nut processing some Yamako processing. Now, pentapod eggs. 
That's a whole... Oh my gosh, my brain. I love it. This this feels like Fulgora in that it's like a whole... I have to think differently. And it's really fun. Um, Vulcanus... I, I don't actually know if it's a point for Vulcanus or a point against Vulcanus. It's certainly a bit of both. But Vulcanus does not feel like Fulgora and Gleba. Fulgora and Gleba both have had this, like, I have to think different. I have to imagine different. I have to process entirely different ways of thinking about Factorio. Vulcanus felt very much like Nalvis. Um, yeah, you pump lava, so it, like, it has a different feel. I'd say Vulcanus feels more like what mods have done with Factorio, whereas Gleba and Fulgora actually feel like different Factorio. Um, and so, does that mean Vulcanus should be more different? Does that mean Gleba and Fulgora should be more similar? I don't think the latter, so I think, if anything, Vulcanus didn't get enough of a overhaul. Or... They kind of wanted a gradient of difficulty in the planets, and it's good to have a planet that's a little bit easier to understand. Um, but that's the obvious reason why a lot of people are gravitating towards Vulcanus, is what I was kind of trying to say, uh, but didn't actually say it. So I think I think that's kind of the one of the main reasons a lot of people are saying Vulcanus is the best choice to go to first is also that like it it's clear that it has the most similarities to um now this as far as how you think and so it just even mentally it's easier but on top of that it also just provides a flood of resources that make it a good choice for like a home base yeah in some ways vulcanus is easier than now this exactly Okay, so the Yumako Mesh we're gonna keep putting in here. And then that's gonna make nutrients. Oh, but everything could have spoilage on it. So every, so here's where things get tricky is like, since everything can spoil, everything has to be figured out. It's super interesting. Cause spoilage is gonna end up everywhere that you're not accounting for it. Like, this needs nutrients, but I can't just have nutrients come over here and back up. Because eventually they're just going to turn into spoilage. So it's almost like you need a nutrient loop, maybe? Maybe a nutrient loop. I need to go find some more eggs. How do I set up the eggs? We need nutrients and eggs. Okay, so I really need two bio chambers to get this loop going. Um, so let me go find some more pentapod eggs. I probably should be done with the episode soon because we're already an hour in, but that I think is an egg raft up here. No, yes. Ah! Some friends in it. Okay. Okay, there's nine eggs. Cool. <laughs> a loop or a river? A nutrient river. Uh, okay, so... This needs the eggs. And then it needs nutrients. But there's no nutrients here. It's all spoilage. All spoilage all the way down. Oh my goodness. All right. So don't make nutrients till you're ready to use nutrients, because nutrients turn to spoilage very, very quickly. But we can make more nutrients from spoilage, so we need to filter out the spoilage to turn into nutrients. I feel like this is where I start going absolutely insane. Okay, so let's bring down some splitters. And some more of everything. And then... Filter that off. And then this will just be, for now, a little nutrient loop. And left, to the left go the spoils. All right, and then the spoils turn back into nutrients. Let me put that back on the belt. Oh my goodness. 
All right, so that's going to do that from Yumako Mash, which only lasts a couple minutes as well. Um, that's fine. Now that's running. I'll keep some eggs back. I only have 13 minutes till those start spoiling. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> this is insane. This is flat out insane. Did I not bring uh, the right kind of passive provider chest? Uh, it seems I did not. Ah, crap. Okay, so there's a couple more bio chambers. So now, what the heck? What the heck and heck do I do for pentapod egg looping? A pentapod egg looping needs nutrients and water. That's basically it. And then we loop the. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> yeah, spoilage is like someone saw ash in Pyanodons and thought, I can, I can one up that. Um. Okay, so that'll grab nutrients. Then continue to spoil, which is its own issue that I don't want to talk about. Or think about. Oh my god. Um. Spoilable modules. Uh, get behind me, Satan. Um. Does it make new unspoiled eggs? Uh, it does. They start fresh. Wait, why did that start at 99% though? Why wouldn't they start at like 100%? Oh, it's like averaging the pile? Okay. Um. So... Is there a way to read spoilage? It's like we need these to just keep looping. Oh god, what are we doing? I feel like I already don't know what to do. Because we want this to keep making pentapod eggs. How do I consume these? Used in. Can I just burn them? They are burnable fuel. Um, so we can always do that. Oh, they're what we actually make the science packs with. <sighs> okay, so we need some sort of loopage. We need egg loopage here. Oh my. But, but there's no way to filter out like past less than 25% spoiled. So that's not a thing. Now what? I ran out of Yumako mash. That's because we don't have the Yumako seeds here. Being planted. Yumako. The Yumako seeds. Come this way. Those get planted and become Yumako fruit. Okay, so I at least have seed planting automated. Yes? It's gonna work? I think this is gonna work. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let me throw a few laser turrets here, just in case. So those are gonna take a minute to grow. You went Glaba first and without science past blue. Yeah, that's insane. It's so different than what I'm experiencing right now. All right, we'll throw all our spoilage in there for now to keep that running. Also, Aylor, you were talking about it barely provides enough power, but that's not considering the stack size. If it's moving, if it's moving 12 per swing, that's that's still a, more power. Because 12 of these provides, you know, a few mega tools or something. Three mega tools. 
goodness. Okay, so this loop needs nutrients, which needs Yumako Mash, which is gonna be in here. Blacklisting Yumako seeds. Seeds can't spoil, so I don't have don't have to worry about that belt having spoilage on it. So then this will have mostly Yumako Mash in it. We'll go here. But then stuff is gonna turn into spoilage. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm just like, like my brain, you know when I was on Fulgoran, my brain was broken? We've, we've gotten to that state again. Um, So spoilage, <laughs> rare spoilage, it's, it's cracking me up. Should I keep it though? Hold on. Yeah, I should, because we need rare spoilage for making some of these things. So yeah, let's, let's not ditch that. Gotta keep that rare, that rare pile of rotten alien plant flesh, you know, that's important. Um, yeah, Fulgora does seem simpler. I got I got sucked into the quality rabbit hole on Fulgora, which was certainly a thing, but if I hadn't, I don't think it would have been quite as bad. Now... Basically, I want to copy this, but change that into that, and this into this. And then put that over here. Get rid of the cliffs. Um, and then this is the seeds. Okay. So now we need jelly nut. Are we just? Oh, I refresh out. No, we got we got jelly nut. We got the jelly nuts. Okay. So then that's the seeds. This is gonna be everything else. Which will eventually include spoilage. For now, we'll just be jelly. This is so weird. Okay. For now, I'll just burn all that stuff. Sure. Keep things hot. I could put an alarm here to tell me I'm out of heat. Um, now, why have we not seen any of this yet? Are we just about grown with these trees? 80%. Okay. So, artificial soil is kind of a big deal. I really want that sooner rather than later. Which... Does this also keep burning even when it's at max temp? I guess we're about to find out. Yes. Okay. So this is a way to delete spoilage because it will it will just keep burning stuff. So then turn spoilage back into nutrients. So that should work. Oh, there's so many different ways to do this. I love it, and I can't figure it all out, and wow. I do think we'll call this the end of the YouTube episode, though, because we're an hour and 13 minutes in. <laughs> but we've got, I think, is this about to, yeah, there we go, there we go. We've got Yumako automated. Now, I assume you get enough to make more seeds, like, on average. Hey, Chosen Titan, thanks for the follow. 50 Yumako gives you one seed. And... How much... did one seed give me? When I harvested a tree. Was it 50? So is that not net positive? I'm actually not sure. 
And yeah, that's making some spores. So that's gonna be a problem. It feels a bit problematic if it's break even. Because then that means. Right, it's net positive because biochambers have 50% productivity. Right, that makes sense. But of course you have to feed them with nutrients. And once you're out of nutrients, there's no easy way to get the nutrient... Oh my gosh. So it's like you almost need this to be fed with spoilage constantly. Just to make sure the nutrients are always doing something. There's more spoilage. Um... There's about 500 ways this can all jam up. This is, this is complicated. I mean, this is way more work than the other two planets. So again, the obvious reasons why people prefer certain things. Now, how do we keep eggs from spoiling? this can keep looping them then we're gonna end up with just too many eggs and we need the ones that are about to spoil to go I said, I said we were going to be done with the episode. <laughs> we need to be. So, an hour and 20 minutes. So, for those of you future YouTubians, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next episode.